Israel. He's perfect in all of his ways. God, you're strong and mighty. You're mighty in battle, God, and we thank you and we bless you. Come on and lift up the name of Jesus. God, we honor you. Come and sup with us today, God. Breathe on us as we lift up the name of Jesus. He said, if I be lifted, I'll draw all men unto me. So lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Wherever you are, begin to call him holy. If you know him as mighty, call him mighty. Put those hands together, yeah. We serve an awesome God. He's a magnificent God. And we come to praise his name. Help us sing it. Holy are.
today we want to challenge you to think bigger. I know we've talked about thinking deeper. We talked about ruminate. We talked about thoughts on thinking. But today I want you to think bigger. All right. Let's see if we can do that. But before we do that, I want to welcome all our online worshipers. Uh, thank you again, all our partners, everybody. You know, you all are the ones that make this happen. So thank you for allowing us to come and share with you and, and you share with us. So make sure that you download the Winning Church app to follow along with the notes that will be provided for you. Also, please sign in on the app and to show that you're present so you can possibly win a free gas card. And then I just need you to text the keyword "win give" to this number seven seven nine seven seven. Do that for me right now if you can. And you may want to give your tithes and offerings. So right there on that app, you can uh, give your tithes and offering, or you can go to our website winning winning dot church, and you can give there. Got any questions during the message? You can just type it in the comments. Uh, my leadership or myself. Uh, we will be sure to, to answer anything that you may have or questions you may have. Please share and invite uh, your friends, your family, uh, you know, acquaintances, anybody. Join us this every Sunday online at 8 o'clock. And if you didn't get enough, hey, join us in person at 10 a.m., okay? So let's get started. We've been talking this whole month, and this is our last Sunday, talking about reset your thinking. Can you type that in the uh, comments? Uh, re reset your thinking. Reset your thinking. All right? So this morning, I want to talk about resetting your thinking. Uh, think bigger. Uh, come away with me to Numbers, the 11th chapter. Uh, verse 4 is where we will start. See, we... Uh, we want to see things from God's point of view. You know, people are always talking about what they see and what they want and how they see it happening. But let's see it from God's point of view, because every day we are advancing the kingdom of God. But we are only as powerful as we want to be. Because what I found out that there's a lot of folk uh, that want to go to church, but not many want to be to church. You know, they talk about church. They you know, now in this pandemic season, they might not want to go, but they talk about church. They talk about having church online, church at home, church, 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 but they don't want to be the church. Even whether you come in in person or not, you still got to be the church. So that's what we got to do because, you know, we're tired of looking for God in a building. We're tired of looking for uh, Jesus on the cross. We're tired of, you know, we got to do it this way. got to do it that way. That's what people say. I don't want to. And so I'm, I'm just tired of my way or the highway. God way falls between the wayside and that's what we are really dealing with in our time and our season and we we want to go beyond that we got to think bigger than that you know buildings and your way and this and that and the other so let's let's read numbers the 11th chapter verse 4 it says it says here not a mixed multitude who were among them yield the intense craving. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt, the cucumbers, the millions, the leeks, and the onions and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. There's nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Now the manna was like the coriander uh, seed and it colored like the color of delum. And the people went about and gathered it, ground it on millstones or beat it in the mortar, cooked it in pans and made cakes of it. And its taste was like the taste of pastry prepared with oil. And when the dew fell on the camp in the night, the manna fell on it. And then Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, everyone at the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was greatly aroused. Moses also was displeased. Verse 11. So Moses said to the Lord, why have you afflicted your servant? And why have I not found favor in your sight that you have laid the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I beget them that, that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a guardian carries a, a guardian take care of a nursing child to the land which you swore to their fathers? Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they weep all over me, saying, Give me meat that, that we may eat. 
And I am not able to bear all these people alone because the burden is too heavy for me. And if you treat me like this, please kill me here and now. This is what Moses is saying. But I found favor in your sight. And do not let me see my wretchedness. All right. Verse uh, 16 says, it's talking with the 70 elders. It says, So the Lord said to Moses, gather me uh, 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tabernacle of meeting that they may stand there with you. Then I will come down and talk with you there. I will take of the spirit that is upon you and will put the same upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with you that you may not bear it yourself alone. Then you shall say to the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow and you shall eat meat. For you have wept in hearing of the Lord saying, who will give us meat to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. My, my, my. Therefore, the Lord will give you meat and you shall eat. You shall eat not, not one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor 10 days, nor 20 days, but for a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils and becomes loathsome to you. <laughs> because you have despised the Lord who is among you. And have wept before him, saying, why did we ever come out, up out of Egypt? And Moses said, the people whom I am among are 600,000 men on foot. Yet you have said, I will give them meat that they may eat for a whole month. Shall flocks and herds be slaughtered for them to provide enough for them? Or shall all of the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to provide enough for them? And the Lord said unto Moses, has the Lord's arm been shortened? Now you shall see whether what I say will happen to you or not. Really a funny story, a story of small faith. I want to just talk to you briefly about us having bigger thoughts, thinking bigger. Amen. So God, <laughs> we, they were saying, they, the people were just talking and saying, God, we, we, don't, we don't have enough to, to feed them. Moses, when, he, when, when, when did he, you know, get weak? Moses, open, his, uh, open your mind. Open your mind. Enlarge your thinking, God was saying. Enlarge, can, you, can you text that in the comments? Enlarge your thinking. Or I must enlarge my thinking. And I set the world in place and I spoke into existence. This is what God is telling Moses. You want meat? I'll give you meat. <laughs> so what we see here in this text is that God fed the complainers. People were complaining and God fed them. He fed them so much until they got tired of eating that, what he gave them. He gave them so much until they didn't want no more. And if God would do this for the complainers, what will he do for worshipers? Good God Almighty. If God will feed those who were complaining and give them more and more and more and more, what would he do for people who will worship him? God, I always want to make things bigger. How can we be bigger? You know, look at us. We're three times uh, bigger than uh, we were. We, we're singing praises. We're, we're, we've found freedom. We, we're, we've lost religion. We've lost religion. Uh, uh, the, the religious. We've seen your Holy Spirit. We're working in your gifts. We're growing in knowledge. Have you met God? This is not his pinnacle creation. God says, you ain't seen nothing yet. I will enlarge your territory. I prayed here, here in this city for God to enlarge uh, these local churches. And I bless local churches. Why did I do that? If I pray a blessing on their congregation, then I get blessed. Why? We're all in the same body. We're all in the same. When, we, when any of us prosper, we all prosper. I don't want to be, you know, a griping to God like this story, uh, these in this story. God wasn't mad because they were sick of their menu. He was mad that they still wanted to be in Egypt. 
They still want to be after all God had done for these children of Israel. They wanted to go back into Egypt after God had delivered them and freed them for what they was in. And that was bondage. Amen. See, we can we can get caught up in the buildings. We can get caught up in the names or the denomination. And I don't care which building I worship in, what the name is. I just want to worship you, God. See, that's how we got to think. I just want to worship the God. I, I want to worship the King of King and the Lord of Lords, the Savior, the King, my Redeemer. I want to be where Ever you want me to be, Lord. That's where I want to be. No time for us arguing and about what God can do and what he can't do. And, you know, I should have stayed where I was and you want to operate in your past. No, God's got a great future for you. You need to just trust God and see where God is taking you. I mean, he's not just going to do everything so you can understand it. He's sovereign. He, he does things that confound the wise. He does things that may be, seem like it is just elementary. It seems like it's rudimentary to man. Uh, but God says he will take the simple thing and he will uh, confound the wise with it. So God is a God that will work it out in his own time. He will work it out the way that he wants to work it out. You just got to trust him. Praise God. So we got to think bigger. Here's another one with the four fishermen that's called uh, uh, as disciples. In uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 1 says, So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesareth and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little, pull out a, a, a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Can you see? Can you see that he's out there in the water? And he's teaching them from the boat. My God! So they just won't, you know, rush up on him. But when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, "Launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch." But Simon answered and said to him, "Master." We have toiled all night and caught nothing. Like he going, like he telling him, rebuking him, saying, now you don't know nothing about no fishing. I, I, we know what to do when it comes to fishing. You, you understand. We know what we're doing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. Man, I wish God would begin to bless us so much until we have to signal to other people to come and help us because we got so much and we want to give it away. And so he, they signaled for them in the other boat to help them, and they came and filled both the boats. Look at that, that the overflow, so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees uh, and, and saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Look at verse 9. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were John, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Here's another story of small vision. People have small vision, but God wants us to think bigger. Lord, I've always done it this way. That's what Peter said. We know where the fish are. God wants to fill our nets, but we think we already know. He wants to almost sink our boat because we got so much. Drop your net, Peter. There's a new way to catch fish. Forget what you knew in the past, Peter. Check this out. I got something new and improved for you to do. God has taken us from what we thought we knew and what we thought we had to something newer and improved and greater in our lives. And so God wants us to think bigger than what we have thought in the past. God give us bigger thinking. Let our thoughts be greater than they ever been before. Because what we think about is what we will tap into. So thank you for greater thinking today. See, here's what he says in Jeremiah, and I'm going to end this thing up. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call to me and I will answer you and tell you, watch this, great and unsearchable things you do not know. 
God got some things for you that you haven't even tapped into yet, that you don't even know about yet. But if you call unto him, he said he will answer. In the days to come, I want to challenge you to call on the God. In the days to come, I want you to be in a place where God said he's going to tell you something great. He's going to tell you things that are unsearchable. You couldn't even search this out. You couldn't even figure this out. But God said, you don't know anything about this. I got a blessing that you don't even know about yet. So the body of Christ isn't defined by a building, but a building is defined by the people in it. If the people in it are faring well, if the people in it are getting blessed by God, if the people in it are getting delivered, healed, and set free, it's really not about the building, but it's about meeting in the building with a God that will permeate this house and will cause this house to blow up for the better. I'm telling you right now, in these years to come, in these days to come, shall I say it like that, in these days to come, my face swelled when I think of how God is working on our behalf. I'm telling you, my faith is increasing because I know that God is going to do something greater than what we see, what we hear, or what we think. I'm telling you, he's going to give us, you know, more than what we can think or see or say because uh, the power is already working in us. We just got to tap into it and know what God is doing through us. You are greater than what you have settled for. So as I end this with this last scripture, listen to this. Psalms 37 verse 23 says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Come on. Put that in the comments. My steps are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. I'm telling you, I am delighted in my way. I'm, listen, I've got more joy than I ever had before. I'm happier and I'm settled in my spirit. Uh, if I have it, it's all right. If I don't have it, it's still all right. It, it, I, don't, I don't care if I'm with the haves or the have not. As long as I got God in my life, Lord is leading me. I'm telling you, I'm able to think bigger than what I could ever think in my life. God is bringing us, turning this thing, uh, and we're coming full circle. I'm telling you right now, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. We're about to move in areas that we've never moved in before. I see greater ahead of us and the, and the scriptures say, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I'm telling you right now, if I fall, God said, that's all right, I'll pick you up. If you have fallen, Jesus will pick you up. And the scripture says in verse 25, I have been young and now I am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. So God said, I'll never leave you alone. I am the first one to come to your rescue and the last one to leave you by yourself. I'm here. I'm, I'm Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and I am the end. I will give you things that you have not seen. You will walk in places that you've never walked in before. You will be in houses that you did not build. You will have things that you did not work for. God said, I'm going to bless you above and beyond. You can ever even think or imagine if you can think it is greater than that if you can see it it's greater than that we are on our way up moving to greater and bigger and, and and greater things that's coming our way so be encouraged do not fret do not throw in the towel do not get be dismayed for God is on our side and so I want to speak to you when in church and beyond God is doing more than what we see he's doing more than what we say that's why we got to change our thinking because of our thinking change then our actions will think, change. If our action will change, then we'll see things that we've never seen before. So I'm ready. How about you? Are you ready? Let's get on this train together. Let's move forward together. Let's go grow up in God together. Let's move in a mighty way together because if God be for us, who can be against us? I'm saying right now that your eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men what God has in store for us, but he going to reveal it by his spirit. And that's why I'm glad I'm connected with the Holy Spirit. I'm glad I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm glad that the spirit came to rescue me. Jesus said, I got to go back to my father, but the comforter will be here. I will leave one like myself here for you. And he will lead you in all truths. He will lead you my, and guide you in all truth. Thank you, Lord, for not leaving me here helpless and leaving me here lonely because I always have somebody that will walk with 
me. He even told me that uh, uh, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So I'm thanking God right here and right now because my thinking is elevating what I'm receiving. And so as soon as you begin to think it, as soon as you begin to say it, as soon as you begin to walk in it and obey God, you are sure to see the blessings of God overtake you. The Bible said it will overtake you. Can you imagine in your mind, you minding your business and just taking a little trot, a little jog, and the Bible said that your blessings will overtake you. Goodness and mercy will overtake you. Will my God run you down and bless your life be time. So God bless you. I'm out of time, but I love you, and I'm looking for you to come and be with us in the in-person service. Yes, the old things are passing away. Behold, all things are becoming new today in Jesus' name. God bless you. We'll see you on the next time. We love you, and I know that heaven is smiling on you today. I want to tell you one more time, peace, joy, and love in the Holy Ghost. Continue to be excited. I will. Hopefully, I'll see you in a few. God bless.